Welcome to Silesian Snippets, stories from Mornese and beyond, where the fifth of every month, we'll learn more about St. Mary Mozzarello and our Silesian charism as we prepare for our 150th anniversary. Thanks for tuning in, and we hope you enjoy the show. Hello and welcome to our monthly edition of Silesian Snippets. I'm your host for tonight, Sister Monica Wheeler, and we are super excited to have Sister Vroom Do joining us as our guest. Welcome, Sister Vroom. Thank you, Sister Monica, and thank you all those who are following us at this time. Thank you so much, and thank you for the invitation. I feel so, so privileged to be here with all of you. We are honored to have you. So as you all know, after joining us for three consecutive months, Salesian Snippets is a time when we get together to prepare for the 150th anniversary of the Salesian Sisters. We join you on the fifth of every month because our very first sisters, Mary Mazzarello and our first sisters, made their religious profession August 5th, 1872. So we'll be coming to you live the fifth of every month through July before our big celebration in August 2022, 150 years of the Salesian Sisters. So thank you again so much for joining us. And as you know, in our Salesian charism and our Catholic and our Catholic teachings, we know that all good things begin with prayer. So we want to enjoy, um, invite you to join us in praying this prayer to ask Saint, for St. Mary Mazzarello's intercession as we begin this time together. Let us pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Father, source of all that is good, you give us in St. Maria Dominica Mazzarello a shining example of Christian and religious life. Through her deep humility and ardent charity, grant that we, in simplicity of spirit, may bear daily witness to your fatherly love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Mary, hope of Christians, pray for us. Saint Mary Mazzarello, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, you all may know now that part of our routine in starting this show is to give you a trivia question that you can think about while we are introducing our guests. So today's trivia question is actually a quote from St. Mary Mazzarello, and your job is to fill in the word. So blank is the sign of a heart that loves God very much. So we invite you to put your answer to what that blank might be into the comment section on Facebook so that we can see what do you think is the key to the sign of, or the sign of a heart that loves God very much. And then we'll give you that answer at the end of the show. So while you work on that, we are going to get to know Sister Boom a little bit. So Sister Boom has been, is she's originally from Vietnam and has been professed as a Salesian sister for 15 years. It's her quinceanera. Um, she has served in Arizona, Laredo, and San Antonio, Texas, and is currently the provincial treasurer and is one of those people that you might have met before that gets all excited over numbers, right, sister? <laughs> yes, yes. She loves numbers, so you get her all excited talking about numbers. So Sister Boom, uh, one way that we get to know our guests a little bit here on Salation Snippets is we play this little game at the beginning called From the Mundane to the Mystical. Are you ready to play our game? Yes. Okay, so I am ready. Ready for anything. Okay. Yes. So the mundane question for you, a seasonal mundane question is, what is the most unique white elephant gift you have ever received around this time of year? White elephant gift. I recall going to a meeting at the diocese in San Antonio and all of us were asked to bring a gift and I can't remember what I brought, but something of white elephant that it was no use for me, but I'm pretty sure, you know, one man's trash, another man's treasure. So when we're playing the game, and I end up with a sombrero, a little hat, straw hat. You know, I'm like, when am I going to use this hat? Well, when I got transferred to the radio, I took it with me. 
And believe it or not, living in Laredo, some of you might know that it is so sunny, especially in the summertime. And so I actually have used that sombrero to cover the sun and I end up finding some good use to it, you know? And so I, I still have it. I think it I've even seen cool. you in that sombrero before, but I didn't know the story behind it. So now I'll think white elephant every time I see you in yes, your sombrero. Yes. Okay, good answer. And our mystical question, um, as you all know, Mary's got two feast days this month. In addition to our big celebration of Christmas, we also had the huge celebration of Mary Immaculate, the feast of the Immaculate, and then Our Lady of Guadalupe. So Sister Vung, you know, as daughters of Mary Helpful Christian, we, we know that Mary walks with us, you know, in our lives. But I wonder if you would have any experience in your life that you just really felt the closeness of our Blessed Mother that you could share with us. Yes, yes. I recall, you know, growing up in a Catholic family in Vietnam, and our family would pray the rosary every night. But one particular night was so, so important to my life was that night when we were on a boat. And of course, in 1979 was when we left our country. We fled by boat, escaped by boat. And I remember very clearly, we did not move. The boat just sat, you know, still in, in, in water. And here we're like, oh my gosh, are we moving or we're sinking? But that moment, I can hear very clearly those who were Catholics were praying the Hail Mary full of grace. And it brought such peace, you know, to all of us. And shortly, a couple of hours after that, I wanted to say the boat was able to continue to go on. But at that moment, how life was so fragile and was what people did, they called on Mary for help. And she was there with us. And I truly believe that she walks with us and she is with us. That's beautiful. I mean, it shows also the power of that simple prayer, right? We all learn when we're kids, the power of the Hail Mary. Well, thank you, Sister Boom. That was a, that was the, you did an excellent job playing our mundane to the mystical. And so today, our topic for Salesian Snippets is Salesian joy and cheerfulness. And Sister Boom is a great one to call in for this topic because you, if you know her, you know that she always has a smile on her face, even when she's dealing with numbers. <laughs> so Sister Boom, this, this, virtue of, of joy, of cheerfulness. Can you just tell us a little bit about how that has played into your life, like your experiences of how joy has been um, been operative in your experience, your life experience? You know, it's really the basic things in life. I recall uh, on the boat, we didn't have much to eat. We only had rice and water to cook. And that's what we cooked, rice and water, uh, rice with water. And we had rice with no meat no vegetable, not even salt. And my brother, you know, who's four years younger than I said, wow, you know, only if I have soy sauce with my rice. And for him to be able to express that desire, but we were so happy just on the essential at that time, which is rice to sustain us on the journey and um, being, grad being grateful for what we have at that moment, you know, the present moment. And looking back, you know, I, I, I have to say, I'm very grateful to be able to escape safely. And so, you know, life is just beautiful. I mean, there was a reason why I, I lived to tell you that story. If, if I didn't have that um, moment, I wouldn't be able to share you what happened to me that, um, that, that moment when we were so very hungry. And believe me, rice tasted so, so good, even without meat. Just plain rice was sufficient. And how old were you when you fled Vietnam? I was eight and a half, almost going on nine. So I, I, I remember very clearly, you know, how we escaped. And you ended up, you didn't come right to the United States. Where did you end up? We ended up in Thailand. So it took us four nights and three days by boat. We ended up in Thailand and we lived on an island for five months overlooking the beautiful ocean. And life on the island, carefree. Oh my gosh, you know, being eight and a half, what is there to worry about? But to, just to have fun and even play in the rain, you know, um, and and think and trusting my mom and dad, of course, they were there with, with our family and um, just living that present moment. It was such a, a gift, a big grace for me and for my family. That's beautiful. And, you know, it's, it's really, I, I think that that childlike trust is so powerful. You know, um, in reading about our early sisters, about St. Mary Mazzarella and our early sisters, like they experienced incredible want too. Of course, theirs wasn't rice. 
they had just a little bit of polenta, but, um, but they experienced like hunger, like all, almost to the point of starvation. They were, they were in such great need and in need of warmth and, and their childlike trust in that context was in the providence of God. And um, Mary Mazzarello, you know, sometimes the pictures of her, she looks kind of serious. But if you read her letters, joy and cheerfulness and gratitude, it, it just pours out of her heart. And it's so beautiful to hear. There's one letter that is, I don't know how many times she mentions cheerfulness in it, but she's writing to a priest. And she says, you know, I don't even know what I did to deserve all of these cheerful sisters. Um, and I think even today, like, Salesian joy is something that people sense when they walk into our houses, which is good. That means it's it, we've retained it from our origins. But there's one story that um, always strikes me about you know this interior joy that Mary Mazzarello had, that that joy that comes from having that confidence in Christ, having that uni union with Christ, and that is this story that many of you may have heard of the chestnuts. When the sisters had no food in the house and the cook comes to St. Mary Mazzarello and, and, you know, is panicking. They have nothing to feed the sisters. They have nothing to feed the boarders. They have children there. They don't have food. And Mary Mazzarello just gathers the sisters and says, okay, sisters, girls, we're going to go on a picnic. And the sister who's cooking is like, oh, we don't have food. <laughs> and she says, that's okay. God will take care. And um, she told them they're going to go out and gather chestnuts. So they went out, they had a grand time, gathered the chestnuts, roasted them on a fire, had a lovely experience and experienced the providence of God. They didn't go hungry that night because of that. But it really like the, the interior joy of St. Mary Mazzarello, the cheerfulness that she exhibited, I think it really was what allowed the sisters to get through those really, really difficult early years where they had so little. So is there any part of Mary, St. Mary Mazzarella's experience of joy in those difficult circumstances or just anything about that story that strikes you? You know, as you were saying how she wasn't alone, she took a group of, of young girls and sisters with her. So they were together. You know, I think already being together is a great joy that they were not alone. And can you imagine being so hungry and here you have chestnuts to eat? Who wouldn't be happy, you know? <laughs> I would be happy if I go hungry and find something to, to eat. And, and definitely, um, that's the beauty when we remain together, we remain united. And that already in itself is, is, is a big grace, you know? Yes, a huge grace. Maybe that's, yeah. maybe that's one of the keys for Salesian joy is that unity. <laughs> We mentioned earlier yes. in one of the shows about family spirit. So I guess they do tie together, tie together in that sense. <laughs> That's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, you, you shared some of your experiences of finding joy, like in the present moment. But um, one of the reasons why we chose this topic about cheerfulness of joy is that um, this, this time of year, I mean, it's a season of waiting, but it's also it's waiting in joyful hope because we know the gift that comes to us at Christmas, the gift of, of Christ into our world. I mean, it's mind boggling that God would choose to come as a baby and um, the, just the, the joy of this season. And I wonder if you have just maybe a, a challenge or an invitation to our, our viewers tonight. Like what, what is the invitation to live joy during this Advent season? You know, you wanna hear a fun fact. I did not discover when I was baptized. Can you all guess when I was baptized? You probably wouldn't guess, but it links to the season of Christmas. I was actually baptized on Christmas day. Imagine some days that. coming up. <laughs> exactly right. But you know, this this um we all know that we are now in the season of Advent, and today's the second Sunday. And how you know we look at what what are we waiting for? What are we preparing for? And obviously, we have this time to even to reflect, to meditate, and just to sit back, you know, the busyness of the world. Who am I waiting for? Who am I celebrating? And I hope you all have the time to, to be with, with Christ. You know, we're going to be celebrating his birthday. That's the greatest party of all time is his birth. And allow your heart to be prepared. Prepare your heart so that on the day of his birth, you have nothing but your heart to give him. And I hope you won't spend so much time shopping. Of course, you don't have to go out shopping. I know you're going to be shopping online, most of you. Mm -hmm. 
But you know, spare that quiet time, reflect on God's love for us. All right. And so I, I just hope that that make this Christmas season that we're going to be uh, celebrating on the birth of Christ, make, make it special. Make it be, you never know, this might be your last Christmas, our last Christmas. And so let us prepare our heart joyfully in welcoming Christ into our life. Beautiful, beautiful invitation. And I, I, one thing I'm just taking away from this is that confidence that you mentioned, the childlike confidence. How can you not be joyful when you're in the hands of a loving father? <laughs> So, so thank you so much, Sister Boom. And as always, we have trouble logging into Facebook to see the correct answers. So we'll get to see some of those in just a minute. But our answer to our question, fill in the blank, remember, was blank is the sign of a heart that loves God very much. And we were giving you hints all throughout this show because St. Mary Mazzarella would say that joy is the sign of a heart that loves God very much. So we hope all of you go and shine that love of neighbor to, and of God to the world this um, Advent season um, with the joy that you have in your hearts. Um, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you, Sister Boom. And don't forget, we join you every fifth of the month to bring you more members of the Salesian family, more virtues of our early sisters that we attempt to live like them in today's world. We will join you next on January 5th when our guest will be Pam Myers, who is the coordinator of the cooperators in the Western province. The cooperators are the lay associates of the Salesian priests and sisters who are so much help to us in our educational mission. So we're super excited to have Pam joining us to speak to us about Salesian work and mission, about bringing Christ to the young and the young to Christ. So thank you again so much for joining us here tonight. We hope to see you back on January 5th, and we wish you a very blessed Advent and Christmas season. God bless. And good night. Thank you. Good night. Bye-bye.